Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this mini tutorial series uh, dedicated to importing animations uh, within Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition and Remastered. This small series of tutorials will cover the process from start to finish and it is dedicated to enemies as I believe that the process for importing custom animations to players has already been achieved in the past or showcased in the past but I'm pretty positive that nobody has done a tutorial series for enemies, nor if this has been achieved in the past by anyone else. In this first little episode, we'll be covering uh, data extraction, as well as getting the assets ready for animation. For starters, as a premise, uh, if you are trying to import animations into Dark Souls Remastered, you're also going to be needing the Prepare to Die edition, as the extraction per se is performed on the old version of the game. Any tool that I'll be mentioning during these tutorials will have a link in the description pointing to that tool and its documentation, so that if you're ever curious about it, uh, you can just go and have a look at it in your spare time and come back here with uh, increased knowledge. Our first step is now to locate the enemies we want to make an animation for and we'll need the character data and the animation data for the character. So my goal for this mini-series is to create a custom animation for the Asylum Demon, which is the first boss, and its ID is 2232. However, we're going to be using 2230 as there's a problem with the skeleton data exported from 2232 and 2231 has the same exact data but in a correct placement. Uh, so in this case what we need is character DNB and anim DNB files which I'll decompress with Yabber and once that's done we should be able to start uh, meddling with these files. So to start off we're going to open the character DNB files which should be decompressed and copy all the content of said folder somewhere. In this case I've chosen a specific folder for this into one of my drives and here we go we'll copy it. Well, Terra copy seems to have glitched there. Uh, yep, yeah, then after that, we're going to need something else from the animation files, reason why we've decompressed it, and it's this specific skeleton file. Whoops, sorry for that, let me just close it. Um, skeleton file, which we're going to go ahead, copy into the same folder, and there we go. We could potentially open the asset as it is right now, with Noasis, but we need to do another thing before doing that, because otherwise uh, Noasis won't be able to read the skeleton file. Um, you can see me go ahead and open it. Uh, by the way, Noasis, we need a specific version for that one, which contains some plugins made by the Dark Souls community to be able to read Flavare formats. So what we're going to do now is convert a skeleton with this specific script, which converts it into a readable format for an oasis. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy it in the same folder where we've placed all our other assets. So dragging and dropping the file onto the script doesn't work. In some cases it does, but for this script it seems like it doesn't. So we'll need to do it a different way. Uh, we're going to need to open this with a command prompt and type in a specific command. Now you can see me just here copying the application name to get the help and the command that we're going to run is convert and in this case we're going to type in name of the file convert uh, skeleton dot whatever file format this has and here you can see me mistyping this because I suck at typing so I'm just going to go and reconvert it and there you go the script has converted it so once you open Noasis uh, it will allow you to open the flavor file uh, Notice that Noises per se will not be able to do this, you need a specific version as well uh, that I'll link in the description. And if you've done this correctly, you'll be able to upload the flavor file alongside the bones, alongside the skeleton, and the file basically will load up all the information. So you can export it into something that you can edit and you can actually just toy around with. And my choice of format usually is the FBX format from Autodesk. And you can just save it anywhere. Uh, I've left the default settings up, so nothing to change there. And we can go ahead and export it. All right, so we're done with the noises, and we can just go on ahead and load a editor of any kind. My choice for this is Maya. 
which is going to take a while to load, so I'm probably just going to skip ahead. And there we go. Now that it's open, we can just uh, on open our file. You can see here I've already worked with this, and this is not the first animation I'm doing. You can now open your file, uh, the one we just converted. For me, it's in 2022. There we go. Uh, animation tutorial. And there it is, the FBX file. Import it. <clears throat> and should be good to go. Uh, in theory, you could animate straight from this, but there are two things that we need to check out. First, is the rigging working? Uh, well, this bone controls everything, so that's not helpful. And yeah, there we go. Whee! There it is. It does. So, we are technically ready to animate, and the reason why I say technically is because there are two things that we ought to still do. Um, First one is we are going to need to scale the root bone up by two point, I think 255%. And the reason is on import, when you re-import the animation back, the model size is going to be scaled down by a lot. And I'm not sure exactly why, but I suspect the script conversions have something to do with this. Uh, not sure if these are going to be fixed, but we're just going to scale it up and animate with this scale up and this should fix the problem from the start. And the second thing is you're going to need to pose this character. Usually I would do this by copying the uh, starting frame of the idle animation. Uh, sadly, I do not know how to extract data from the already existing animation. That would be a lot easier if you could just copy the reference pose and bring it in. But I do not know how to do that, sadly. So I'm just going to hand pose this. And to showcase what I mean by that, I'm just going to open uh, Anim Studio, made by Mia Meridus, uh, and showcase what animation I'm talking about and there it is this is by the way the thing you're seeing here on screen is a custom tool made by Hoodie uh, Nameless Hoodie who's done this lovely suite called tool name that collects every single major modding tool and here it is let me just open it and scale it up to size so you can see uh, but basically that pose is what we're going to need to copy to make sure that the animation interpolates from idle to whatever you want the character to do. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part.